Good afternoon. It gives me immense pleasure to extend to you all very warm greetings on behalf of Society of Naval Architecture Students. Society of Naval Architecture Students is the student's body of Department of Ship Technology. It is responsible for nurturing young naval architects by organizing various events like this. Just like past two years, SNAS is aiming to organize the various webinar series led by distinguished industry experts discussing relevant topics outside the book. Anthropogenic greenhouse gas emissions have increased since the pre-industrial era, driven largely by economic and population growth, and are now higher than ever. Even after overwhelming proof, there are still people who deny the existence of climate change and its devastating pitfalls. Greenhouse gas emission is a major issue worldwide that needs to be prevented by taking serious measures. Today, I welcome Mr. Ajay T. P. Rambaran, Maritime Decarbonization Specialist, who is currently working at Class NK Tokyo, Japan as Greenhouse Gas Auditor. Now, it is my honor to invite Mr. Ajay T. P. Rambaran, 30th batch alumnus of our department to enlighten us and broaden our horizons on GHG emission reduction trends in the maritime sector and thereby marking inaugural webinar of this academic year. Hello everyone. I'm Ajay. I'm from 30th batch and uh, I'm really honored and very happy to be here and share my experience. And one request is actually, I don't just want to stick to this topic. Maybe I, I want to give you more, more broader outlook about the industry, about the career, everything. So please feel free to ask anything because I was also like you sitting in the seminar hall think, thinking what we should do next, where we should go. So probably what as an alumni we want to do is we want to share our experience for the benefit of all of you. So uh, I, I was passed out in 2009. Then I moved to Mumbai office uh, of class NK as surveyor. So I was working as a ship surveyor, a new building surveyor. But uh, that time I was trying to learn many things. Then I did plan approval engineering, that is structural engineering. For uh, Then I moved to uh, equipment engineering, uh, all inside class NK. In 2013, I moved to Japan. And for last 11 years, I'm there. And in 2016, my major shift happened. Uh, I moved to decarbonization. So for last seven years, I'm working in decarbonization. And this is a good good career also. If you, I mean, it includes naval architecture, everything. Every industry is included in decarbonization. Because, you know, especially after the Paris Agreement in 2015. So whole world is looking for how to, how to cut short the emissions, how we can improve new technologies. So it is, uh, it is more broad, not constrained to, you know, designs or structures or anything. It includes many aspects, the economic aspects, the social aspects, uh, the public aspects. So it is a broader industry, decarbonization. And uh, maybe I will give you a broader outlook through this presentation. So today I will cover the latest trends in greenhouse gas reduction. How, I don't, I mean, as far as I remember in our syllabus, we were, not having anything specific to decarbonization. Have you ever gone through something like that? Decarbonization or something? In your academics so far? No, okay. Yeah, so basically in a naval architecture perspective, decarbonization, can you imagine where it will come? It will come in the energy efficiency. If, if you are like the echo ships or if you take the automobile industry, there are many new cars, echo cars and all. So the difference is in fuel saving or in, you, you say it mileage, right? In similar similar way. So for ships, it's all matter of energy, energy management, which is coming in decarbonization. Do you know why it is so? 
because the amount of fuel burned is equal to the carbon dioxide emission. So the more efficient your ship is, the less carbon it emits. So we all are working for improving the energy efficiency or improving uh, the carbon emissions, I mean, reducing the carbon emissions. So you all know about IMO, right? International Maritime Organization. So our industry is basically driven by IMO, the whole shipping industry. So do, can you imagine how, how we set the trends in the industry? The first thing is regulations. There are many, many regulations. So if, for example, in India, central government is saying, you cannot uh, run ships with heavy fuel oil. Or even if, if you take the car, car industry, in Europe, they banned diesel cars. So in similar way, the government or the, the ultimate regulatory structure, they are setting the trends. So there are many, many layers of regulations. And ultimately, because of such regulations, we will change the industry. So today my focus is the regulatory aspects, basically, because they set the trends of how the industry should move. IMO, there is, a, a, you know, there is safety committee and marine environment protection committee. That is MEPC. Do you know about MEPC? Ever heard? No. Okay. So, you know, the IMO is basically run for running for the safety of the mariners or safety of the life. That is SOLAS. And the second thing is MARPOL. That is maritime and, uh, and marine pollution prevention. So for this maritime marine pollution prevention, there are every year two gatherings of all nations. So even India is represented by somebody and they, they all meet at uh, London. So that's also a good career you can dream of. You can represent India or any country and you can go to IMO and speak about the problems around the world. So MEPC 80, it concluded in July, uh, that last MEPC. MEPC means a gathering of all nations to decide what we should do next. And we set a new target that is by 2050, the whole shipping industry will change to a net zero emission industry by 2050. Do you think it's an achievable target? No emissions in 2050. Do you think achievable? Yes, yes, whole, whole world is working for that. So we need to achieve it. So the new engineers coming from the universities, they are working in decarbonizing sector. It's a big challenge. Because of course, if, if you burn fuel in an engine, it will emit. And new technologies should come to capture the carbon. Or no carbon is emitted by some new kind of fuels, like e-hydrogen, you know, e-fuels, e-ammonia. So the new, the ammonia engine will be released in 2024, the first ammonia engine in the world. And ammonia and hydrogen is considered as the future fuels for shipping. So let's work. You all should also work for this 2050 target. Then only we can achieve this. Because even by this, uh, you know what is Paris Agreement? Anybody? So Paris Agreement means we have decided the amount of temperature rise should be constrained to 1.5 degrees Celsius. 
because of the global warming, the temperature is rising. And there are many catastrophes, including the rains, rainfalls, floods, everything. So all nations decided the temperature rise, we should restrict to 1.5 degrees Celsius maximum. So world is working for that. So let me start with uh, my contents. One is operational efficiency, technical efficiency of the ships, EU emission trading system, MEPC AT updates, and some tools I will explain. Just one more question. Uh, do you know, uh, Greenhouse gases, which all are greenhouse gases? Yeah, CO2 is the main gas. Yeah, there are many other methane, nitrous oxide, many gases. But why we mainly focus on carbon dioxide is because almost 90, more than 95% emission is through carbon dioxide. So all these tools are focusing on carbon dioxide all the regulatory frameworks. So the first thing is about CII, operational efficiency of the ships. Okay, uh, so it, it's a measurement of how much your ship is efficient, operational wise. Simply we say with your car, you can get 15 kilometer for one burning one liter of petrol, right? In similar way for maritime industry, CII is the standard of how we measure the operational efficiency. So it's, it's calculated by CO2 emissions divided by dead weight of the vessel, distance sailed. And this is the CII formula. So this CII is a new, new tool. It just got implemented this year. So from now onwards, every ship will be having a CII rating. So uh, there will be A, B, C, D, E, five ratings. And uh, this is calculated based on 2019 world emission data from the ships. For example, this bulk carrier data, bulk carrier uh, ships of 2019. And you can see there is a required CII and uh, there is an attained CII. So basically, after one year, you cal collect the data of ships, how much distance it sailed, how much cargo it carried, and how much fuel it burned. And then you calculate where, what is your efficiency. So if your ship is equivalent to the average, it is C rating. And if you are more than good, then it's A or B rating. Otherwise it's D or E rating. So this is going to be very crucial because economy is also involved like commerce, uh, so now, now onwards, the market-based measures. So based on your rating only, your ship's chartering rate will be decided. And one more thing is, if you go forward, the idea is every year, 2% is the reduction target. So if you maintain for example, in 2024, you, have, you are a ship owner and your ship is getting a D rating. And if you maintain the same performance, next year it may fall down to E rating. So the idea is you should keep on improving the efficiency of the ships. Then only you can maintain the rating. So now you will ask why we should maintain the rating. And the, reason, the main thing is, based on your rating, you can decide the income of your ships. 
money is involved. So that is market-based measures which will be implemented in whole industry in 2000. Uh, we are expecting it in ne next MEPC, the discussions will happen. I will update about that. So this is a real graph of rating. So here you can see this is A rating and this is E, rate, e rating. And if you ship, so with these tools, you can identify where your ship is standing. So for example, this is a, anyone of in, you interested in data analysis and all, not just structural design, you, you know, most of your friends in IT, they will be working as a data analyst. So in decarbonizing, Data analysis also is a, is a very important role because you have to analyze the operational data. So for example, this ship, you can see these all are operational data of the vessels, other vessels, and this ship is standing here, which is equivalent to D rating. And this is the, this is another data dashboard, which you can see the ships number of ships with the rating a b c d e and this ship is standing here so any questions about operational efficiency if no i will move to the next so the first part i covered about ship operations and efficiency next is technical efficiency. So that is otherwise called the hardware efficiency. It's uh, based on EEXI. That is based on the engine, engine power and specific fuel oil consumption and capacity of the ship. So this is, this is a, like the design. The other one which I talked about is how you operate the ship and how you can optimize. This is the design. So uh, it's called EEXI. So for improving the EEXI, so EEXI is a measurement, how efficient your design is, ship design is. So the most of the ships are now doing because this is a new regulation, they are reducing the engine power and it's running in a slow, slow speed to maintain this requirement. Okay, that's about the technical efficiency. Now I will talk about another, another interesting term that is EU emission trading system. Um, I'm just curious whether whether you invest your money in stock market or something like that. Anyone doing bitcoins? Maybe many. Yeah, yeah. So similarly, the next next phase of carbon is carbon trading. So I have many friends in shipping industry who is buying carbon credits, carbon, and investing on carbon. So EU, they started the first, European Union started emission trading system. So it covers like 100% of the emissions in Europe. So if your ship, ship is sailing in Europe or from India, it's going to Europe. If, if it, for example, if it emitted 500 tons of carbon and 50 percent that is 250 tons of carbon is subject to emission trading system so every ship every company will be having a cap you can only emit this much if you emit this you need to purchase from the market so there will be somebody who is having the carbon shares and they will sell. 
and this this price it keeps on fluctuating so that is you eu emission trading system so this is a direct impact to the industry so cost estimation a bulk carrier if it's sailing from south america to europe you can see approximately 37000 us dollars in 2024 is the additional expense just because of this carbon trading system similarly in 2026 94000 us dollars for one voyage additionally is the that's expense so this is one interesting thing because you know may, many are working in this line also because it it finally enter into the market and just not not the ship uh, ship design there are many career opportunities so here you can be a data analyst you can be a trader you can be an economist deciding uh, how much your ship is going to save so it's a mixture like so this is called eu emission trading system another rule is limitation of ghg intensity for fuels this is something do you can you name some of the fuels which are used in ships do you know any any fuels anyone anyone huh diesel yeah diesel marine diesel oil is one fuel huh yeah natural gas lng liquefied natural gas is one fuel any any other fuels okay so the most common fuel is uh, heavy fuel oil and very low sulfur fuel oil it's called hfo and vlsfo and of course for auxiliary engines it uses marine diesel oils or marine gas oil that is same as petrol so now we are going to a world where we change the fuels forget about fossil fuels so there are many fuels in pipeline especially hydrogen have you heard about hydrogen cars so hydrogen ammonia methanol these these all are futuristic fuel especially the e fuels do you know what is e fuel so if uh, so normally fuel it's obtained from some chemical process from raw materials from uh, extracted oils etc right e fuels is from renewable energy so e hydrogen do you know how e hydrogen is made example maybe from solar energy water water electrolysis you maybe you might have learned right electrolysis of water will split hydrogen and oxygen so just with the solar energy change it uh, the high extract hydrogen so it's the production process is a very eco friendly process and it it is not involving any carbon dioxide emissions of course there are involvement so e fuels mean which are produced from renewable sources the fuels produced from renewable sources so this ghg intensity is an another requirement uh now uh, i will next i will briefly explain about mepc 80 updates so uh, as i said 
this this committee mepc marine environment protection committee they decide the strategy of the world which fuel to be used which regulations to be implemented so the, these all are the, the new targets by 2030 40% reduction uh, that is in transportation work and uh, by 2030 nearly 5% or 10% new technologies by 2040 to reduce the world emission from maritime industry by 70% and by 2050 net zero this is the target and for achieving this target as i said uh, there are economic measures of course if government is just saying you should not emit carbon dioxide who will hear so you need some benefits some money involvement so that's fee based system gag levy system funding and reward gag fuel standard international maritime sustainable fund these all are the economic measures which are discuss discussing i said you about eu right so similarly for everywhere such economic measures will be implemented and another thing is life cycle assessment uh anybody having idea about what is life cycle assessment anything uh, it's not just the maritime it's a normal term for example take take this this laptop yeah please yeah almost correct so it's like uh it's it's not just the moment we use one one product but from the from the beginning how it is produced and from each cycle and till the end of the cycle of the product so the, that's i mean so we should finally if maritime industry we are saying we will not emit any carbon dioxide but you can see here but you think imagine we are because of us many fuel makers or in in land they are emitting carbon dioxide take natural lng fuels for making lng there are a huge process involved in land and that process involved many carbon dioxide emissions and for transporting this lng to a ship it involved emissions so the life cycle assessment is a new area which involves everything not just fuels but you think in a life cycle perspective anything so mepc 80 it concluded that for ships life cycle assessment can, is can be applicable so we are expecting by 2025 for the fuels life cycle assessment will be the base of calculating how much carbon dioxide ship is emitting so it means from oil wells to feed stocks and transportation refineries and finally to ship this whole process not just burning here and calculating carbon greenhouse gas here this is not the right way because for taking this getting this fuel here there is a process involved here and here for example if it is a biofuel Uh, so this is about life cycle assessment biofuel it can be it, it is decided that for biofuels uh, the cf 
considering well to wake ghg emission by well to wake ghg emissions of biofuels can be applied for imo dcs and cii rating so this is an interim measure but the advantage is you know how biofuel is prepared biofuel is made from plants or the extracts or biomass so finally that plants already absorbed a lot carbon dioxide then using that biomass fuel is made so the net if you take it's it's zero right but if you take a fossil fuel it's a carbon and extracted from the wells oil wells and it's just burning and finally the carbon it's just a carbon emission so if you consider the life cycle assessment the advantage is for biofuel so in fact india made uh, the strong argument in last mepc 80 for accepting the biofuels the life cycle assessment of biofuels and my final part is uh, some tools of how this whole industry is moving uh, there is uh, there is zero emission transition accelerator uh, so it includes vessel monitoring fleet monitoring simulations periodical reports you you want to see some simulations of how it happens or something maybe okay uh, so these all are the some tools used so there are many dashboards tools used for to measure the efficiency and there are new life cycle assessment tool emission trading systems management related to being co close so before moving to conclusion i want to ask you do you have some questions so far yeah please particular time period till that you will pick so sir uh you have decided some particular time period that till that time you will be able to have 0% uh, global uh, gsg emission so how do you keep track of that like uh, how frequently you track all these thing and what are the process involved there and how uh, what are the difficulties you face in tracking all these things yeah so that's a good question so finally how we monitor how we track that's called imo data collection system so in 2019 it started so for all ships every year they should report the emission to imo to the administration body and based on the report based on the whole data there were uh, the ghg studies so uh, imo fourth ghg uh, in fact imo started this process in 2008 and in 2013 the first first phase was implemented in 2018 they asked all ships you should collect the data and monitor the performance so every year the performance will be reported and that assessment will be made and accordingly the carbon dioxide emission will be calculated and we decide are we going to achieve our 2030 target 40 targets or 50 targets anyway this is something we are going good to the world also it's not not just you know uh, because it, it's beneficial for everyone the climate change the climate change mitigation any other questions sir another question is that sir 
every country has their different rules and regulation about gsg emission uh, every country has their own different rules and regulation for this gsg emissions control so how do you uh, take that as a challenge and how, what are the challenges you face doing yourself it's for your you question it's question for you yeah. like as an auditor of that how much how many uh, what type of challenges do you face yeah so this this involve many things mainly including the politics uh you know we cannot uh, there will be many challenges especially the political alignment or many countries have their own directions so in overall i will say how, what is happening around the world is there is imo who is the like un united nations body they are trying to control and make it similar to everyone but eu european union they always run ahead they they are pretty advanced especially in climate change the new technologies so they they feel that okay if they do advance just for eu then whole world will follow but again there is a problem then the developing countries like india china they are not their infrastructure is not developed so like, that was the you know the paris paris agreement commitment when narendra modi went he he committed india's national defense uh, and sorry ndc that is a nationally deterministic contribution to the climate change so uh, of course the previous protocol kyoto protocol so it it involves uh, a consideration of developing and developed country then it's good right developed countries like us america or europe they their infrastructure is developed so they can limit themselves more but in india if you take here we are just growing and if they suddenly say you need to stop the diesel cars you need to st stop doing like this our industry will be stagnant so in kyoto kyoto protocol in 1997 it involved two differentiation the rules applied for developed countries and developing countries but in paris agreement the latest one how they decided is actually this is a target there is a target and whole nations should come forward and tell what they can contribute but uh, that is for the land in the land industry basically shipping is out of all this shipping is a global uh, international thing which it's it's basically difficult to control by one nation so shipping is a new it it is under imo but again in shipping also what challenges we are facing is we cannot unify the regulations there are eu regulations or uh, china is coming okay china is saying whichever ships coming to a port should do this 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 thing so there are such challenges but of course imo will try to uh, face that i mean imo will try to unify that and make it easy for everyone any other questions Good morning, sir. I'm yeah. Rohit from Forgex Batch. Okay. So my question is, uh, what role does uh, digitalization and data analytics uh, play in optimizing um, vessel efficiency, fuel efficiency, road planning, etc., for a better reduction of uh, this carbon emission? You have talked about um, um, the analytics methods. Several methods have been uh, talked about in the session. So I want to know more about the digitalization. Uh, how it will uh, affect the production of carbon emissions yeah yeah so 
digital india or digitalization is very much linked to digitalization because you asked somebody about asked about uh, how it is monitored monitoring is the most difficult task how can we monitor each and everything how much carbon is it emitting so for monitoring the emissions the digitalization is one of the key key part if the ship is sending data actually you know what my job is i'm now i'm i'm doing auditing auditing uh, around 6000 ships i audit 6000 ships emissions and every 10 minutes we will get data from ship and how much fuel it's consuming every 10 minutes we will get ais uh, the position data or the distance data so to monitor this emissions we need the digitalization as the key so it's both linked and there are many career pathways also for data analysis uh, like the tools these, these all tools are based on digitalization or any software tools for monitoring reporting dashboards everything any other questions Uh, good on um yeah. harideep from 47th batch okay so you spoke about data analysis how does artificial intelligence play in this greenhouse gas emission calculations everything yeah uh, so ai is the next next step next tool so based on that because we are getting the information of how each ship is performing so this knowledge can be used to run the ship efficiently in next ne next generations so the next next phase that is ai is not not it much incorporated in shipping so the first phase we collected the data now we will understand how each ship is performing and the next phase is applying it to optimizing the operation that is one thing the second thing is optimizing the design and uh, there are some tools like uh, performance like the based on the weather conditions weather routing do you know about weather routing weather routing means for if for example if your ship is going from mumbai it's going to singapore so there are weather forecasts and now cast the actual sea conditions wind weather etc so based on the live weather how ship should route so that it can optimize its uh, fuel consumption so these all things involve the data learning from the data or ai that's the next things which which are getting developed we have a software uh, so it's napa you know napa yeah hi sir uh, myself father from 45th batch uh so you said that by 2050 we have to uh, get uh, the old ships with the zero emissions so when what are the ch main challenges when we face when we are incorporating a new alternative fuel like uh, methane ammonia etc compared to the conventional hfo uh, fuel ships yeah so we have a target by 2050 we will cut cut the emission by zero so the challenges the first challenge is availability of new fuels there is no i mean fixed uh, suppliers who agreed they can supply hydrogen they can supply ammonia 
there is no production process for hydrogen for shipping of course in history there are hydro there was hydrogen car developed by bmw but uh, in shipping the first thing is availability of new fuels the second challenge is technologies so so far our engines are designed to run in heavy fuel oil or uh, lng such fuels so there are there is many compatibility issues when you try an engine with ammonia or hydrogen especially hydrogen the carrying of hydrogen it it needs compression ammonia ammonia is also a dangerous gas so the industry is not much aware about how to handle the new fuels and technology is also yet to develop next is uh, the carbon capture system that is ccus uh, so from the emissions directly the carbon capturing there are mechanisms especially in land so that technology development is also yet to happen so these all are the main challenges for for achieving our target in 2050 okay any other questions yeah so now you just said that you we don't have a lot of uh, we don't have a lot of concrete options for other fuels so isn't 2050 a very ambitious target like are there any alternate options like if not if we do not reach there by 2050 are there other yeah so uh, till till last month our target was zero emission by end of this century but in july with the mepc the whole countries decided zero emission from maritime industry by 2050 it's a very ambitious target but we we need to align with the, the commitment of uh, unfcc that is the paris agreement because if only shipping industry is not trying to achieve that and all nations everyone is trying to achieve that so that's why imo said uh, we will try and uh, again this this question was raised uh, so i would say the here you can see uh, the targets the target is to reach net zero ghg emission by or around close to 2050 so similar to you last mepc 80 the countries like uh, india and the island countries small countries they asked maybe developed countries can achieve this but how we can achieve it so then the imo said we will achieve it close to 2050 some somewhat around 2050 so it's a, it's a challenging thing but uh, we need to work the industry will the main one keep part is the partnerships the developed eu or uh, other nations they should exchange the technologies for ghg reductions partnership is a key otherwise without that achieving this target is difficult okay so are you ready to work in decarbonizing industry <laughs> how how you felt about the industry yeah yeah please yeah so one one good part is actually i i feel especially the our naval architects from qsat like we are ready to learn any things especially in the industry when we when we enter into any job we we basically are ready to learn many many things 
So decarbonizing is one, one, one of the topic. It's a little bit out of focus from core design or stability. So we need a mindset, of course, to sustain in an industry. The key thing is not just one technical knowledge. We should know what all things happening in the other areas also. So that's why, like as I said, in 2016, it's now seven years. I'm working a little bit out of our core uh, naval architecture or structure engineering, everything. But I'm feeling it very interesting. And this involves a new, many new learnings, especially the operational of the ship. So now, now we are equivalent. I mean, we are learning the knowledge of a captain or a chief engineer how to run the ship just by analyzing the data and performance from the from offshore. So it's, this is an interesting profession. If you are interested uh, in this. It's of course challenging because we need to know more about uh, the engines, operations, emissions, but we can learn very easily and switch to this. And this is of course related, related to efficiency, means related to design, related to propulsion, resistance. So it, it, is, it never means that you are out of everything naval architecture. It's all related. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah, instead of class NK, I would say, uh, yeah, uh, like Japan, if I say Japan, Japan is more into ammonia. They think that ammonia is the next fuel. And hydrogen is, of course, the next fuel, but it will be mainly consumed for the land, especially automobile or the other transportation industry. And in, in maritime, basically ammonia and hydrogen are the two futuristic fuels. But now Europe, they more giving R&Ds on methanol. Uh, that's one fuel which they are using and uh, then bio, biomass, biofuels. But finally, what we believe the most of the R&Ds are happening around ammonia and hydrogen. So even India, now we, we, you know, we green hydrogen policy, India announced the green hydrogen policy. So the, that's basically for the land, land industry. But for shipping, we expect ammonia. And the main is engine. The key thing is how to manufacture an ammonia engine. So BMW, uh, Actually, MAN BMW is the main engine maker. They said that in 2024, there are two in Japan and in Europe, two, two researches happening for developing ammonia engines. So it's almost ready by this year. That's the main thing. And the next challenge then researches are happening around the systems, the piping systems. Because uh, Ammonia it includes a lot of corrosions if, if you use ammonia. And the next is about the storage. If you store an ammonia on board the ship, actually it's not good smell. So ship's crew cannot leave it very easily. So there are researches happening about the storage of ammonia. And in designs, the new ship designs, I have seen the new design concepts are all ammonia stored in like superstructures, not a little bit far from the accommodation spaces. So there are many researches happening like that for the future fuels. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's like 
of the world's emission. The international shipping is causing around 3% three, 3 of the world's emission. Yeah. Yeah, to achieve the targets, the first thing what we did is the world, we started the monitoring. That was the first part, collecting the data. So from 2019, now it's almost four years. Four years, the world is having the knowledge about how much emission. That is the first phase. And figure wise, we, uh, we don't think uh, we have achieved much. Of course, we have improved. So here you can see, this is business as usual. If you continue this, the emissions, it will go as like this, 2008. So IMO, GHG, this was the initial strategy till last month. And in 2023, we changed the strategy and this is our timeline. And our first measurable thing will come in 2030 because uh, that is the end of short-term measures. So we, the, we have divided into three kinds of measures, short-term, mid-term and long-term measures. So the fuels and all are long-term measures and short-term measures are the regulations for operational efficiency or uh, the technical efficiency. So this, we basically, we have achieved, of course, we have achieved a lot. I mean, but we will get a good picture in 2030. How much we achieved. And that, that's also one measurement. By 2030, we target 40% reduction in carbon dioxide transport work. Okay. Anything other than carbon dioxide or greenhouse gas you want to know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's that's a very good question. So I think, sir, uh, especially after 2018, we uh, I mean, the world has changed this decarbonizing into this thing. So like uh, I'm also a student uh, for maritime energy management. So I think this should be a part of our curriculum also. Because yeah, <laughs> we can teach online. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, it says, but uh, anyway, the practically understood, <laughs> but uh, I think uh, more courses are oriented to sustainability, decarbonizing the 24. Okay. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Okay. I think uh, any other thing, questions? Maybe uh, apart from this also, okay. Any 
because i work in a classification society so if you this is one area which i touched okay i think uh, it's done sir i think yeah so thank you all this comes to an end of the session so i would now request everyone to have a look at the chat box and please fill up the feedback form provided there so now we would like to present a token of gratitude to mr ajay tp damvaran for honoring this event and delivering a wonderful talk So Ajay was an excellent student of this department, and he just came for two weeks leave from Japan. Okay, and today morning was his housewarming. Okay, he, he got a new house, and today morning was a housewarming. And in spite of that, he he stood by the promise to Snas. So thank you, Ajay, for your <laughs> your taking time out and coming here. <laughs> i also congratulates nas for continuously organizing such uh, talks which are outside your curriculum uh, it is not possible to teach everything in a classroom so i think uh, nas is doing an excellent job and all students uh, participated actively in the discussions so thank you very much okay so this comes to an end of today's webinar so i once again thanks uh, for his wonderful uh, presentation it was um, really you know, um, enlightening so thank you